Carl, obviously a very difficult and emotional night for everybody involved with Oxford. Talk us through it from your perspective. Oh, a goal early on. Um, we didn't deal with the throwing, which led to it, obviously. We knew what was going to come. But from that goal, if there's only one team in the game, there's no, there's no one, we were under no pressure whatsoever. Um, second half, we were, we were very good. I thought we moved the ball efficiently. I thought we broke lines. I thought we got chances. We created the opportunities. The ball it doesn't go out. I'm not too sure. Brownie stops. The keeper smashes it forward. We have a, a lapse in concentration, and the rest is history. And that's that's football. That's the harsh. It's the reality. That's why weirdly, it's it's equally why we love it, um, just as much as why we hate it right now. It keeps you on the edge of your seat. It is something that we will we will take this on the chin. You have to show respect to the opposition, always, and we will. I think we've showed respect by giving them the sort of clapping at the end, and my players are devastated in there, and I feel for them. Just how devastating is it in that this moment in that dressing yeah, room? Yeah, listen, the big thing for me is never about me, and you know, you know me quite well. It's never been about that. It's not something that uh, I, I worry about me. Um, we've all got different paths that go from here. Um, and some of our players will go on to other things, possibly. We, we were always hoping that this could be the opportunity to keep a team together, as you well know. I've never had that chance ever. Um, but for me to decide what goes on from here as a football club is a bit too soon and a bit too raw. Um, I'm sure we'll be having conversations in the football club on Wednesday about the reality of what's happened here, let that sink in, and how far we can go um, and what we're willing to invest in and we'll see what happens then towards the end of the week. We're all getting used to football in post-Covid-19 times. In an empty Wembley tonight, how difficult does it make it for players and everybody? It's irrelevant. It's irrelevant how many people are in here. I feel more sorry for the fans who aren't here. Um, our fans have backed us all the way. They've been sensational from the beginning. It's sad that they can't be in here. Um, they would have made some sort of difference, I'm sure. I thought the pressure that we had, I thought the, the constant ball movements, that would have been a drain, uh, sort of sapped them a little bit. Um, but it, it's not nice playing without people. It doesn't make it any easier, mate, trust me. It still hurts just as much. And we just hope and we look forward to the next time that people are back in our stadium and enjoying football. But right now, I can't enjoy football, unfortunately. I know that, and I'll just pick up on one point. I know, and I fully understand, it's not easy to look to the future at this moment, but have you seen some signs that, with the ownership you've got, with the backing that you've got, that Oxford can go places in the future, that your turn will come to take a step into the championship? Um, that's a question that we have to answer by what we do, not by what we say. Um, like I say, all the talking that I do or all the talking that we do, it'll fundamentally be proven in the players that we sell or don't sell or the players that we buy. The board know what my ambition is for the football club. No one ever expected Oxford to be here so soon, so quick. And then when you look at our season with the FA Cup run and the, the Carabao Cup run and the goals that we've scored, we've been sensational all year. We fell at a very, the very last hurdle in the harshest, harshest way. But no, we... It's actions now, I think, more than more than what we talk about. So we'll, we'll cross that bridge, hopefully, in the next 14 days.